please help me welcome Ayomitan Pamileri. Please, a round of applause for him, please. All right, so while this is coming up, um, I just want to quickly do a quick survey as to how many developers that we have here. Um, front end, smart contract, um, just um, signify. All right, thank you very much. Um, I think this is taking a little bit of time. So yeah, um, how many of us have uh, MetaMask wallet? How many of us? All right, cool. I think pretty much everybody, <laughs> we all have MetaMask wallet. Okay, so um, did we actually find the experience um, seamless um, as a first time user? Did we find it seamless? Um, no, why? Um, can anybody tell me why? Sorry? Switching of what? Network. Network. Okay, that's one. Um, another person? Any other bottleneck per se? So um, for a first-time user, when you actually come on board, um, you get to download MetaMask, and um, there is a problem of having to write down your seed phrase, and you have to um, be in charge of managing this seed phrase yourself. Am I correct? I mean, that's the experience everybody actually have, and it's kind of really, really um, a friction, because take, for instance, Web3 is for everyone, right? And um, we want to pretty much onboard mainstream users and so when I talk about mainstream users, I'm talking about um, my grandma, I'm talking about my aunt working for a government parastatal who basically just want to um, come on chain and experience what it is to have um, a decentralized web. Am I making sense, please? Am I making sense, please? Yes. Amazing. Um, <laughs> so sorry about that. And so, yeah. We have quite a number of bottlenecks um, for people who are just coming on board. And so my talk is pretty much about a developer who wants to actually build um, a user, um, a really cool, seamless user flow for developers or for your mainstream um, users such that um, they can be onboarded in pretty much two clicks, right? So take, for instance, the current scenario that we have is that um, you have to download your, uh, your MetaMask, You'd manually secure your seed phrase, and now you have to navigate through different centralized exchanges to basically get um, the native assets of those chains, whatever chain you are trying to uh, interact with. But ideally, you basically just want to perform on-chain transactions, right? You just want to do stuff, and you don't want to bother about um, having to do all of those things. And believe you me, it takes like 20 minutes or 18 minutes to be onboarded for a mainstream user. Right? So the essence of my talk is basically to enlighten developers, founders, if you are building stuff in the ecosystem that you can basically build, um, you can supercharge user experience by leveraging social logins and smart wallets as a service. All right, so that's what this talk is all about. Um, so please, um, you can ride with me while this thing actually comes up. And a little bit of introduction. My name is Ayomito Pamileri. Um, and on Twitter, uh, <laughs> they call me Ex Pam Pam, right? Um, pretty much. And um, currently, I work as a developer advocate at Kaya Foundation. Um, Kaya, found, Kaya basically is a layer one EVM compatible chain, and um, pretty much the public foundational layer for tomorrow's on chain world. So if you are looking to build anything around metaverse, RWA, and also um, gaming, pretty much anything you want to, you can envision on chain. So Kaya is like the go-to um, layer one, and also it proud itself to be um, Asia's gateway to um, Web3. So yeah, pretty much about me. And also in my leisure time, I do um, open source. Um, I contribute to open source, and I also help other people contribute to open source and earn while contributing to open source. All right. Uh, so sorry, guys. Um, I think that's the essence of my talk. And um, so I mentioned the bottlenecks, right? Um, one of the bottleneck is that users basically have to write down their seed phrase, and once that is done, they have to now go through the extra step of going to centralized exchanges, right? Uh, which is like an asshole. 
So what this talk basically is all about is that you as a developer or as a founder or as somebody building in the ecosystem, you have to be really, really user experience focused, right? Because we are trying to onboard mainstream users. Um, pretty much a number of um, chains will say that uh, we are the go-to guys to onboard the next billion users. How do we transition from the current UX um, landscape that we have to that landscape where we can actually onboard mainstream users? Now, so this is where social login comes in. Uh, so what are social logins? And so this is me just talking from what I have in the slide. Social login is basically you using already familiar social network sites. Take, for instance, your Twitter, your LinkedIn, your Google account, or even your uh, phone number, and you get to onboard people into the space. Now, you agree with me that quite a number of us have Google accounts, right? Yeah. Really amazing, because um, the world is powered by most of these big uh, tech companies. And um, yeah, we actually use their services, right? Uh, so, so what social logins actually um, brings to the table, you can basically onboard people with their already familiar social network sites. And so every one of us here have um, X accounts, formerly Twitter, right? And so this means that um, most persons have a means of authentication, which is actually some of these social network sites. And um, what social login does is that you get to be onboarded um, to the Web3 space with your already familiar social network sites, right? And so with this, you can reduce the onboarding friction from like um, 10 minutes or 15 minutes to like less than two clicks, right? So um, some of these providers in the space that are actually building social login um, solutions and also smart wallet as a service, we have Web3 Auth, uh, how many of us are familiar with Web3 Auth? How many of us? Nice. We have uh, Magic, we have Dynamic, we have Particle Network, right? Um, oh yeah, thank you very much. Uh, okay, so this is like a screenshot from Ethereum documentation saying that um, using Ethereum needs to be simplified, right? For managing keys and wallets to initiating transaction. So this is actually a major issue, even like the OG um, blockchain actually recognizes this and um, is one of the problems that we are trying to solve. And this is why this talk is for every developer out here trying to build solutions, right? That um, you should focus on user experience because this is where we can onboard the next billion users, right? Um, so I was talking about the different social login providers. We have um, Dynamic, we have web 3 and all of those guys, all right? Uh, so, what social login does is that it reduces your onboarding flow or the onboarding time, like I mentioned, from 20 minutes or 15 minutes to le um, less than two clicks, right? Um, so what, it, what happens under the hood is that when you log in with your social network sites, take for instance, your Google account, what some of these providers actually um, do under the hood is that they create a wallet for you by reason of your um, social logins, Right, and so once this wallet is generated, take for instance, for this talk, we'll actually be focusing on particle network. Uh, so we'll be dwelling on how particle network actually solves the problem of um, user onboarding using social logins and smart wallet as a service, all right? And so um, once you log in with your, your uh, what's it called now? Your, is that your Gmail or your Twitter account? Now you have, access to a wallet, right? Um, so now, you don't have to download a browser extension wallet, or take, for instance, um, Trust Wallet on your phone, or even MetaMask. But in this case, with social logins like um, Particle Network, right, you basically have access to an embedded wallet in your decentralized application. Now, so this means that for a mainstream user trying to use application for the first time, all they have to do is just come to your DAP, basically, and sign in with Google, and they have a wallet created for them under the hood, and once this is done, they have access to um, an embedded wallet rather than a browser extension wallet. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Awesome. So now once this is done, this is actually the first step of actually reducing the onboarding friction. Now what happens to where we can actually make um, 
an EOA smart account. Now, you would agree with me that once you log into a decentralized, or sorry, to a DAP with your social logins, it generates an EOA for you, right? Um, take, for instance, MetaMask is an EOA, externally owned account. And one of like the barrier is that um, once your private key is leaked, you do not basically have access to it anymore. And um, so for first time user, they might not actually understand all of these tenets. And um, so a really cool fun fact is that my first account that I created, I can't find it anymore because for some reasons I changed my phone and I did not keep my seed phrase really well. And um, yeah, when I migrated my phone, I do not have access to it anymore. And so the good part is I don't have much money on it. So yeah, it's really cool. <laughs> all right, so um, what we can do after that we have um, migrated people using social logins, and they've been able to be onboarded, is actually to add a layer of smart accounts. How many of us here are familiar with account abstraction? Nice. Um, so yeah, what um, Particle Network does is that um, it provides a layer of um, social logins and also smart wallets as a service. Now, this means that um, by default, EOAs are um, limiting right, in what they can do and what not. But with the layer of smart accounts, they become a um, powerhouse, meaning that you can perform gasless transaction, you can batch transactions, you can um, do stuff around creating session keys, you can also do stuff around social recovery, right? Am I making sense, please? Now, from this, um, what's it called now, explanation, we can drastically reduce um, this um, problem that was actually specified here, saying that using Ethereum needs to be simplified and that um, we have to be able to make Ethereum as frictionless as using Web2 apps, right? Who else agrees with that? Who else? Amazing, we have quite a number of hands up because it is actually a really um, big issue. And then to onboard mainstream users, we have to actually focus on user experience. Right, so this is why this talk is for everybody building consumer application or basically um, the next um, consumer app, basically, yeah. Uh, so if you are interested in doing this and as like a Web3 um, person, I think you should really focus on user experience. Um, so sorry, this thing is not working. I don't know. I would have loved to like demo to Ross. Yep. So let's talk a little bit about yeah. Let's talk a little bit about what Particle Network is. So Particle Network is basically um, a developer tooling that actually provides social login and smart wallet as a service. They debuted as this um, platform, but now they are currently focusing on chain abstraction solutions. And um, basically, what they are trying to solve now is the fragmentation issue in the Web3 space, right? Um, pretty much it, right? Um, so I mentioned that rather than wallet as a service ending at EOA. Why not just assign smart accounts to them instead, right? So because by default, your um, social login when connected to a DAP generates an EOA, right? Why not just make the process complete? Because if you stop at an EOA, the user still have to bother about trying to pay for gas fees or trying to navigate, going to different centralized exchanges to get the native assets. Take for instance, for Ethereum, you have to now get it to be able to interact, right? But in the case where we assign um, a smart account, you can perform gasless transactions, right? And pretty much all of the onboarding flow is now um, top notch. Who else agrees with me? Yeah, amazing. So now we can take um, the onboarding friction from 10 minutes, 20 minutes to just two clicks, right? And so, so for, for this conference, let's quickly look at um, a demo. So yeah, I kind of like built out a simple demo. So now the idea behind this is that we are trying to actually build consumer applications that people will use, right? And um, so for this um, uh, demo, I actually built out a token-gated platform where people who do not have access to the NFT or tokens cannot access the exclusive content. Now take for instance, in the context of this event, when we were coming inside, we were asked for our registration um, pass, right? And so if you don't have a registration pass, you can't enter, or you basically register on spot, 
right? So now this is what this application is all about. Take for instance, we are trying to build a ticketing platform where we actually want to onboard mass users, people on the road, um, people selling pepper and all of those things. I want to tell them about Web3. Now, we share a link to them. Take for instance, the link of this DAP, and you tell them to go and register. Trust me, most of them will come back to you and tell you that um, they don't know how to use it because they have to download MetaMask if you are using the traditional way, right? Who else agrees with that? We have to download MetaMask. And to be honest, somebody selling paper by the roadside or somebody who is just a banker will not be able to comprehend this kind of mystery. So we see that there's a little bit of um, friction to how we can onboard mainstream users. Right, so this is why um, I have just built this simple platform. And then um, what it does is that, um, now, so this is it. I, I kind of like um, created an imaginary token gated platform. So this is Web3 Lagos Conference. And um, basically what you have to do is you have to sign in with Google or sign in with X, right? Very simple. So take for instance, um, your aunt in our workplace, she basically have a Google account, right? Or even Twitter, right? And so, if you send this link to her, she can basically just sign in with Google and just be able to register for this event and mint the NFT, which is like the pass. And she, in a sense, has, has been onboarded to the space, basically. Right? So, let's take a look at how this works. And um, All right, so, um, this is Particle Network asking for my account, right? Um, I think I'll just use one of these guys. Um. <laughs> All right, so sorry about that, but then, yeah. So I've been onboarded. Now this is Particle Network asking for my password, right? So this is a way to actually secure your interaction with Particle Network. Um, for security, Particle Network uses MPCTSS, which is called Multi-Party Computation Threshold Signature Scheme which is a way of actually sharing your private key into different multiple um, parties such that they don't have access to the original private key themselves, right? Um, so now let me just create a password. Uh, All right, so this is saying that, um, so this is my Gmail account. I am into familiar, right? This is the name of my Gmail account. And it says, welcome to Web3 Lagos Conference. Now, this is because um, while trying to um, test this app, I have actually used the email. Now, let me try to disconnect and um, use an account that doesn't have, uh, let me sign with X, right, um, in this case. So I have to authorize my Twitter account, all right? Um, and basically just... So as you can see, it has only taken us two clicks, which is um, signing, which is um, signing with Google or signing with X. And now these are just the two steps to onboard mainstream users using the already familiar social network sites, other than having to download MetaMask or every other... Um, all these guys are good for OGs like you guys, right? But for um, mainstream users, we need a better way to like onboard users, right? And now, as you can see, it says oxpampam.clay. You cannot enter into the conference because I do not have the pass yet, right? Uh, so I have the access to mint the NFT, which is like um, the pass for this event, right? Uh, so yeah. So in just two clicks, I've been able to perform on-chain transaction without having to download any stuff. Now, on the down, on this part, we have an embedded wallet. As you can see, um, so this is what I was talking about. Um, other than downloading a browser extension wallet, it natively provides you an embedded wallet, which is this guy. Now, so we have moved from actually downloading uh, MetaMask browser extension wallet to having an embedded wallet. As you can see, I have zero accounts, and this is a smart account. This is not just an ordinary externally owned account. It's a smart account, which means that I can perform gasless transaction. I can create a um, batch transaction, and I can basically just batch transaction and do amazing stuff, right? Uh, so 
Now, by default, you are expected to be able to like pay for gas for your first time interaction because, of course, every interaction you have to pay for gas. But for a mainstream user who is like um, your aunt or somebody like that, we want to abstract those complexities, right? We want to be able to abstract those complexities and make it as seamless as using a traditional app. Um, so yeah, once that is done, as you can see, I do not have any assets here. So once you basically click on Mint NFT, you are required to sign the transaction and um, I mean, um, Sepolia is not the fastest chain in the world. It takes time. But then, yeah. Um, so once this is done, you basically see your transaction hash, and you can check on um, Sepolia scan, basically. And so, yeah. This is actually taking a little bit of time because Sepolia is not really, really fast. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so we have our transaction hash. Right. Um, So let's head over to Sepolia and basically just check our um, transaction, right? Um, so while this is loading, this is our transaction hash, right? Um, so yeah, as you can see, this is the transaction hash. We have, this is a user operation, basically from my account and then um, interacted with the um, NFT contract and it minted from um, address zero to this account basically, right? And as you can see, we did not actually pay any gas fees. Um, so yeah, it says, welcome to Web3 Lagos Conference. Um, pretty much the demo. So I've been able to go from not being able to interact on chain to, be, to being able to perform um, transaction and now have access to the token gated platform in just two clicks compared to the traditional way where you have to go all of those steps, download MetaMask, um, the seed phrase, and all of those um, steps that we actually don't need for mainstream users. Okay, so back to the slides. So yeah, um, I'm already rounding up. So it shows that we can actually um, supercharge um, user onboarding basically by leveraging social login, and smart wallet as a service, which means that you can increase um, user adoption, user conversion, and reduce churn rate, right? Um, so yeah, it's still day one, and um, there are a lot of protocols in the space building um, stuff around user experience, and I'm pretty much bullish on what will be done in the few months to come. We have chain abstraction, quite a number of people doing amazing stuff, and um, yeah, um, <laughs> I hope I've been able to convince you and also confuse you that um, <laughs> we can build uh, <laughs> a really nice, amazing user experience um, or a really nice decentralized application that has user experience focus uh, without having to um, leave out the fact that mainstream users can be onboarded, right? So yeah, thank you very much for listening. Um, and you can connect with me on, on Twitter, on, on LinkedIn, or Expand Palm. And yeah, thank you and stay safe. Bless you. Please, a round of applause. Please, you can do better for this amazing presentation. Better, better, better. Over here, why are you not clapping? Clap, clap, clap. You try now, you try. Okay, now this is time for a giveaway. Ah, you are not happy. Oh, yeah, questions. I thought you Do you have any questions? Questions? Okay, let me give you the mic. Okay. Hi, um, thank you very much for your presentation. Yeah, so I'm very new to the Web3 space, but from everything that I've been hearing since the beginning of this event is the entire um, idea of Web3 is decentralization, making everything decentralized. Now uh, you are saying, okay, for better user experience, we should now start implementing social logins into 
um, decentralized applications. How decentralized is it? Because I want to believe one of the reasons why they were using um, the seed phrase is to allow you to be able to be in total control of your account. So if you lose it, it is gone. Nobody is controlling it for you. But now that we are now using all these third-party social applications to um, manage our account, how is it still decentralized? How decentralized is it? So thank you very much for that question. So each time I present this talk, um, people are usually um, skeptical about the security-wise or like how secure is this um, approach to user onboarding. And now my answer to them usually is that um, most of the providers actually factor in putting or ensuring security measures. Take for instance, I, men I mentioned that these guys use MPCTSS, which is like a cryptographic um, primitive in the space to like secure private key. Now, the major issue here is that um, we want to abstract all of these complexities for mainstream users. And what these people have done is that they, now take for instance, for Particle Network, they have their providers, right, just like nodes, right, that we have, which actually stores some of these um, key shares, like I mentioned. They actually store some of these key shares. Now, take for instance, while I was trying to interact with the DAP, um, a key share was actually stored on my PC, right, and I do not have access to the private key. And so this means that every other, um, holders of my keys also can natively see their keys. But then whenever I want to make transaction, Particle Network randomly brings all of them together such that they sign the transaction. So that's how it works under the wood. It's kind of like complex. Now to your question that is it decentralized, I, I, I wouldn't know how to answer that because um, I don't know what infrastructure they are using per se, but then there are actually nodes that are actually scattered across for um, holding each of these keys, and I think that's the major focus, and they actually prioritize security using MPCTSS. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, another question? It will be very fast because of time. Very, very fast. Response is very fast. Okay, so sorry. I'll, I'm just trying to like wrap my head around it, because I also flow the same like, um, train of thoughts from him. Because, like, um, if I'm making a transaction, for example, like, or my own basic understanding, I don't have so much basic understanding, but, like, if I make a transaction, for example, maybe on Ethereum blockchain, I can know if someone has sent me money by scanning the wallet address, right? So, like, I'm just saying, like, how do you factor in security? Because if I'm linking, if I'm using um, account abstraction and I'm linking to third parties, Right, like if I carry out transaction, even though like we're still like using blockchain, like if I transact and all that, but like won't the creators of 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 the stuff basically still know it's me because like won't my Gmail account be linked to that wallet address? So even even though like yes, like if if pe if people are looking outside, they might not know that it's me, but like the the creators of the platform will know that it's me because like my gmail account is linked to that wallet address so i don't know the question looks like an answer right like it's a lot so i don't know is do you think you have enough time or should um, we meet you after yeah we can actually talk after this um talk okay. but, the, but then i think for each of these social logins right they use something called uuid so your um take for instance your google is just a unique identifier to be able to attach a wallet for you, right, under the hood. The wallet infrastructure is basically just different. It's just like a unique identifier to reduce that hassle of having to um, do all of those complex things, download MetaMask, all of those things. So they are just unique identifiers. So as you can see on the portal, I have my name, Ayomi Tonkmamileri, as the UUID. That's because that's like an identifier for my wallet. I hope that makes sense. Yep. Okay. Please, a round of applause for him. Please, a round of applause if you think he did a good job. Yeah, I think he did a, an amazing job as well. Um, so please, before he goes, give him the mic. Can you tell us your social handle, maybe Twitter, so people can connect with you? Oh, yes. Um, on Twitter, OXPAMPAM. And yeah, pam, pam. also on LinkedIn, same, OXPAMPAM. OXPAMPAM. Yep. Please, could you spell the PAMPAM? Pam? Okay, so for Twitter, it is OX 
P A M underscore P A M, right? <laughs> underscore. You see, that was needed. Please, another warm round of applause for him, please. Thank you. Um,